Hey guys, it's Connor. So, I haven't made a video in a while, and I'm sorry about that. Been very busy, lots of stuff has been going on. I recorded a video like two weeks ago, and I still haven't edited it. So, this is my priority though, this video, and I'll tell you why. But, I... Warning, I'm about to show a fake penis. I did a video where I unboxed this and talked about it a little bit. And so I'll try to edit that and put that up tonight too, or tomorrow, because I feel kind of bad that it's been two weeks and I haven't edited. <laughs> so, um, I did mention this in my other video, I got a new haircut. In the other video, I'm gonna put pictures of what my hair is supposed to look like, because it is not gelled right now, this is not what it's supposed to look like. But the other video described that. This video has a very specific purpose. My birds are screaming. This video has a very specific purpose. So, when I got this STP packer, I was like, okay, I need a harness for this. You can buy harnesses, I didn't want to pay for it. You can get jock straps. I don't even know where I can buy a jock strap. So, I decided just to try and make one myself and see if it worked. It works amazing. So, I actually was just, I commented on I forgot his Instagram username, but I commented, he made a post saying how he was trying to, you know, find some kind of thing to hold his STP packer that worked in a way to use it as an STP. And, you know, I mentioned to him like, hey, I did this and I just told him that I'd make a video because I was going to make a video anyways eventually about how I made this because it works really good. But what better time than to help out a friend? So this video is, you know, I mean, I made it because... I wanted to help him figure out how to do it, but it's also for anybody else. So this harness that I made, it can be used for packing an actual packer. It can be used as an STP packer. You just have to cut a hole in it, which I will show on this. I'm gonna do another one. And it can also just be used for packing with a sock. Cause sometimes this penis again, this is really girthy and I'm really small. And so it's very obvious in some certain pants that I wear and my parents don't know I have it. So sometimes I decide to opt for packing with a sock instead because it's less obvious. So this is what the harness looks like. I realize it looks very strange, but it works really good. So first I'm just gonna show you over my normal underwear because this reveals a lot of you. I'm gonna show you over my normal underwear what it looks like on and what it looks like with my STP backer and with the sock. Okay, so this is what this looks like on over my underwear because obviously, you know, it cuts right here. It, <laughs> it shows a lot. So this is what it looks like. I chose underwear that the waistband sits lower than my underwear, obviously, because I don't want this waistband showing over this. So, Obviously it has leg straps, it helps keep everything up. Warning, again, for the peen. <laughs> Basically, right now I don't have this um, made to work with an STP because I've only used this a couple times and I'm not comfortable using it. So what I do with this, is, you know, I just stick it in there, stick the dick to the side, and there you go. Then it just fits very nicely in there and I can't really, <sighs> You can jump around, wiggle, <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't go anywhere. So I think that's very, very helpful because you want your packer to stay where it is. So now I'm going to show you what it looks like packing with a sock. Packing with a sock is fairly similar. It's just a smaller bulge and it just fits right in there and it just, it just stays. It doesn't go anywhere, which is very helpful. And for anyone that's wondering how I pack with a sock, Ooh. Hi. For anyone that's wondering how I pack with a sock, this is literally, do I have another sock? I don't want to unfold this because it's perfect, but I just basically fold the sock in on itself and just kind of try to form it into the shape that I want. And then it just, I don't know, you just put it in your pants and it works. It's great. <laughs> so with this harness, I pack with both, both an actual packer and with a sock and it keeps both perfectly against me so this is what the underwear looked like before I killed it one sec I can't, 
<laughs> That's so scary, no. Okay, that was a relatively funny blooper. Because that was really creepy. So, it goes from this as the normal underwear. Standard briefs, they're smaller, they're tighter. Two, it's inside out. Technical difficulties. To this. So I'm gonna show you how to do that, obviously, because that's the whole point of the video. But just a little bit of information first. Why am I out of breath? I'm so fat. <laughs> a little bit of information first. When you are finding something to do this with, obviously you can't do it with boxers. Boxers, they're too loose. Boxer briefs, it's not gonna work either. It's just not tight enough. And as far as briefs go, I have these and I have Polo Ralph Lauren briefs and those briefs are too loose. They're very comfortable for me, but they're too loose to be a harness that fits under a different pair of underwear. So you want to find a pair of underwear that is smaller and tighter. This is something someone got me. They got me a pack of these, a four pack from TJ Maxx, Hanes. So just look for something that is going to be smaller or tighter. Or if you already have something, then that's great, use that. So, I'm gonna give you a little tutorial of how to make that out of this. That's the whole point of the video. But I actually need to figure out how to get the camera, you know, watching this, because I didn't figure that out before. My camera sits on that believe sign. It like sits right here. So yeah, let me figure this out. All right, this is gonna have to work because there's literally nothing else that I can do. So ignore my totally messy room, ignore the dick, ignore everything that's here. So we're gonna make this out of this. This is honestly, hey, what's your name? <laughs> this is honestly very, very easy to make. It's insanely easy to make. It's So basically I have scissors. These are like fabric scissors, or maybe not, they're craft scissors, so they're they're sharp. Um, and they cut good. Like, kid scissors will probably work for you too. I don't know, just... Trial and error. So, what we're gonna start with is basically, we wanna leave these... We wanna leave these seams here. We wanna cut out everything that's not within those seams. So, I really don't want to do this. Excuse the bottle, the can, in the corner of it. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing. Oh, that's better. There we go. Okay. This isn't the best angle. I'm very sorry. I have no other way to do this. So what we're going to do is we're just going to start cutting right through here, and we're going to cut right under the waistband. So what I do first is I just, can you see this? I just make like a tiny hole right under the waistband. And that gives me a little place to start. And then we just go and we cut along the waistband. And you wanna get as close to the waistband as you can. You wanna make sure you get, I mean, if you don't get super close to the waistband, I guess it's okay, because you're the only one seeing it. But if you're like me, it needs to be good. <laughs> I have standards for myself. That was the most ugly laugh I have ever done, I think. And sometimes it doesn't want to cut, and you have to, like, stab at it. So... This is gonna probably take, like, forever to cut around the waistband, so... I'm gonna find a way to speed this up. Okay, so once you have cut all the way around and you get back to this area with the seams, stop there, don't cut through this or you're totally gonna ruin it. So, now what we want to do is just start cutting down along the seam and along the leg holes. Now make sure you leave, don't cut through the seams, just cut the part that's on the outside of the seams, otherwise you're going to mess it up. 
that's, you know, gonna kind of make things a little horrible and difficult and not great. So, this part can be kind of hard because this, it's just, it's all over the place. Ooh, I have to be right-handed for a minute here. Fun fact, I'm left-handed. Yay! So we just want to cut. You can't even really see what I'm doing. Some of these parts are stubborn. There we go. So what we're doing now, if I can get this to work, is we cut just down along here. And you can start on either side, it doesn't matter. And then we're gonna cut all of this around the leg hole. So this is gonna get cut off, but this is gonna stay here. Okay, so now just as I showed you, we're just gonna cut everything around the leg all the outside. You're basically gonna cut out the butt part of it because we don't need that. This is also gonna take a while, so. Okay, this is important. This is an important step that you need to see. So we are cutting around this leg hole. You'll get to a place down here where there's this, there's this seam that just like, you know, there's the crotch area and there's a seam down here where it goes up to your butt. Don't cut through that yet. Don't, just don't touch that yet. Just go, oh, sorry, <laughs> I can't do this with one hand. Don't do that, don't cut through it just for now. Just go right along and then start going up the other side. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we are just going to continue cutting around this leg all the way up to here and then all the way around this seam right here. So you don't wanna cut into the pouch. You just wanna cut around it. So now we're gonna do that. <laughs> Okay, now you have this awkwardly shaped piece of fabric that you can do whatever you want with. <laughs> All right, now if you look at this, this is almost exactly what I have right here. The only difference is this area is much longer on these. Now what I did to fix that is I just put this on myself and I just like basically measured on myself where I wanted it to stop. And one suggestion, um, <laughs> I'm gonna use a couple words here that might trigger dysphoria and I'm very sorry about that, but I think it's important for me to say. As far as menstrual cycles go, this, you really don't wanna have to wash this a lot. It's got all these frayed ends. I don't know what's gonna happen to it. So you don't want this to go like all the way under there. You want it to stop further up so that if, you know, an accident happens with your menstrual cycle, it doesn't get on there. Sorry for those words, I am sorry. So, what I'm gonna do, because I already have one, is I'm just gonna put one on top of the other and just cut it at the same spot. <laughs> Cause I'm too lazy to figure it all out again. So, let's do that. So putting these on top of each other, obviously I didn't do a super good, good job of cutting this, but it's fine, it works. So I'm just gonna cut at the same place on mine. So what you need to do is you need to cut through this. What I told you to not cut through earlier, you now need to cut through, and it can be kind of difficult. You have to snip quite a few times to get the, it's just, it's not the easiest unless you have super good, super sharp scissors. So, then you just cut up to the spot you measured where you want it, which for me was just right under the fly. And then you just cut it across and you cut this whole square out basically.
Okay. Now you have more awkward pieces of fabric. If you see, when I was cutting it, it ended up totally diagonal, so I just went back and cut from the other side. Because when it's like that, it's not easy. So now you have more really interesting fabric. I have a hat. <laughs> I'm so weird sometimes. Alright. Now look what we have here. Tell me that doesn't look exactly like that. Except it's, you know, lighter in color. So, you now have basically what I would call a jockstrap harness. It's not an actual jockstrap, but it works very similar to a jockstrap and is a harness. So that is how I make my harness, and now just to give you you know, a little more instruction if you want to make it specific to an STP. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make a hole somewhere in here where you can take the shaft out. Alright, now the first step in this, again warning for a fake penis, please don't flag this video, it's for educational purposes. Do I need to be Chase Ross and always talk about not flagging videos? I hope not, but I love Chase Ross, so that's okay. <laughs> so you want to take it, and you want to put it in there how you like to have it. Now, the w because this thing is so girthy, I wear this to the side like this, and the way that they... <sighs> Hi. <laughs> the way that they show you wearing it with a harness on the website is like this. It's too big like that. The idea is this stays there, you know, under... It, so, this isn't exactly the way to do it for me, but basically you just want to get it in there the way you would be wearing it, which, you know, it's supposed to be, it's supposed to be like, mm, it's supposed to be like that, but obviously that like really sticks out. It doesn't look right. So that's not how I wear it. So you would want to have it, you know, to the side. If it's too girthy for you, if not, then you can wear it the other way. Then what you want to do, one thing you can do is you can just use this. Since this is going to be under your other underwear, you can just use this. Please don't flag this video. And then you just pull it out when you need it. Or you could just leave it like that. But of course, again, I can't wear it like that. Um, I'm trying not to get flagged. Mm. So what you want to do is you just want to find... You know the place that it would be and then you want to take a sharpie or some kind of marker and just mark a little dot just for reference you don't have to but it'll be helpful for me at least then oh my phone fell I'm having so many technical difficulties today oh my goodness okay no more technical difficulties so then we have a whole and obviously that's not a perfect hole. It's not in exactly the right place. It doesn't matter. It doesn't need to be exact. You can make it as exact as you want it when you're actually cutting the hole. So then once you have a general idea of where it is, if your hole like mine is not centered, you can just go in and like readjust where you want the hole. Then as we did before, we're just gonna come in like this and make a hole. And obviously this is gonna be like really really tiny at first and now there are two layers of fabric here you do want to make this hole but um through both layers of fabric the markers coming up on my scissors oh my goodness but because these are not the greatest scissors i'm gonna have to do one at a time don't cut yourself doing this I almost cut myself doing this, don't want to do that, not fun. Okay, so now we just have this tiny asshole. Dicks ain't gonna fit through there. <laughs> so what you want, that, see that laugh that I keep doing is hideous and it, I don't like it. So then, penis warning, you want to take your dick and you basically just want to put it there and just get an idea of how big the shaft is. And you can even take marker and kind of draw around 
the, the shaft area of how big the hole is going to be, but I'm afraid it's going to get on the dick. So I'm just going to cut a general area. Now one thing you want to do, this is very touch and go, because you don't know exactly how big the hole needs to be, because the hole will stretch. So what you want to do is you want to cut it smaller than you think at first. If I can get this to actually work. So I just cut four tiny holes around. You don't want to cut like all the way around it, because then the all the way around it, because the hole is going to be too big. So you want to cut smaller first. And then, if it's too small of a hole, you can always make it bigger. But you can't make the hole smaller once you cut it too big. So you just, you want to be a little, a little careful with that, you know? So. Okay, so then. This isn't going to be the easiest thing to do. It's really not possible to cut a nice circle with these, you know, scissors and this without some kind of like... I don't know. It's just really not easy to do. So you just want to cut the best you can from one hole to the next. And if you need to, you can just cut kind of a diamond shape and that's kind of what I'm doing. And I think it's going to work anyways. I don't think it's going to be, oh my goodness, cut. I don't think it's going to be an issue. I'm just going to kind of cut points between each of them and make sort of a diamond shape. I don't think it's going to be a problem. And if it is, oh well, you know what? This is the first time I've actually tried to cut a hole for an STP in here. Because with my STP, I haven't used it very much. And I don't know how to use it super well. And so I'm not comfortable using it out of the shower. So I have not made anything specifically for it yet. So how's your day going? <laughs> I'm gonna make awkward small talk because this isn't gonna take that long and I don't think I need to speed up this part of it. Ooh. Plus, if you're doing this while I'm doing it, it shouldn't be bothersome to hear me talk any anyways. <sighs> I need that music, the, the waiting music. So yeah, this by any means is not going to be perfect, it's going to be messy. So there I have a really weird shape, it looks like it has Then, you want to take it and put it through. Now you see, I cut my hole too big. I cut my hole way too big. So what you want to do is start with a small hole and then make it bigger as you go. Because the cotton will stretch. Now what I can do with this, it's a fairly easy fix. I can just staple it or you can sew it if you have skills. I don't have skills, I can't do that. But you can just staple it and basically, you know, fix the hole a little bit, but it's not going to be as nice. So let me try to fix this. Okay, I made the hole a lot smaller just by putting a couple of staples in. Now the problem with using staples is it's going to like pull at the fabric, it might rip it, the staples might come out. So it is better to sew it if you make a mistake, but because I don't care that much right now, I'm not going to bother. So, see my staple already ripped out, but that's okay. So basically, you now have a packer, and you can also functionally use it as an STP because you have a hole in it. Okay, so that is my tutorial on how to make a harness for an STP, for a packer, for a sock, for whatever you want to pack with. That is how you make a harness. Remember, you want to buy a pair of tight briefs. You preferably want them. Have a, have a lower rise so that they don't show over your the waistband of the oh you can't see me you don't want that waistband to show over this waistband yes i wear american eagle my jeans are also from american eagle i really like american eagle their stuff fits so much better which i'll talk about in another video or at least the underwear so thank you guys for watching this video i hope this was helpful um i know it could have been a lot more helpful if i had like a tripod Stop it. If I had like a tripod and better camera angles, I'm sure it could have been even more helpful. But I hope that it at least showed you how you can make one if you're not able to buy a harness or you just don't want to. And yeah. 
I don't know what else to say. <laughs> um, I'm gonna try to edit, I'm gonna edit this video and post it today. I'm gonna try to edit the other video and also post it and that'll explain more about my hair. And then at some point I might make, might make an update video. If you follow my Instagram, okay. That's more I need to update about. I made a, I don't think I'm getting my main Instagram back. I don't think I'm getting that back from my parents. I don't know though. So I basically have a substitute or temporary Instagram that I'm currently using. If you follow that, you know what's going on. If you don't follow that, you need to follow it <laughs> to know what's going on. Um, I'll put a link to it, or not, I won't put a link, but I'll put, mm, too lazy to put a link. I'll put the name, the username tag down below, and I'll also put the tag to my Musical.ly. You should go follow my Musical.ly. I'm pretty active. I try to post at least once every night, but I like to post more. I've been really tired since I got back from DC. I just start falling asleep at 9 o'clock because it's 12 o'clock in DC when it's 9 o'clock here in California. So, if you're subscribed, thank you very much. If you're not subscribed, think about subscribing. I know I'm really weird. My videos are really weird, but I hope to continue making videos throughout my transition to help other people and to share my experience. And I love connecting with the people that follow me on Instagram and Musical.ly and I'd love to connect with you guys. So yeah, if you guys have any video ideas for me, I have a lot, I have like a list of ideas of videos to do. Um, so I'll hopefully get through those, not, you know, I hope it doesn't take too long. But if you have any ideas for videos, any suggestions of things to do, give me a comment and tell me what you think I should do. I'm open to suggestions and I hope you guys have a really good rest of your day or night or whatever time it is there. It is almost Easter and guess what? Fun fact, my birthday is on Easter this year. So on April 16th on Easter this year, in your mind, wish me a happy birthday. Or message me on Instagram or leave me a comment and wish me a happy birthday because I will be 17. And I don't know why, but I'm super excited to be 17. I'm just done with being 16. So many bad experiences being 16. I'm ready to be 17. So yeah, thank you very much. You know, I might even record another video today with updates and stuff that's going on because I feel like I have time and I feel like recording another video. So I guess I'll see you guys later.